Hi, everybody. Sam Mewis here with an incredible interview on Friendlies this week. Trinity Rodman is our guest, and I was so blown away by my conversation with Trinity. She is wise beyond her years. Her humility and her sense of humor just honestly really blew me away. This interview was so much fun. Trinity has such great perspective on her own game and the role that she's playing for the national team, so I just really can't wait for you all to hear it. We talked about... One of her recent TikToks with all of her U.S. Women's National Team teammates. And she also gives us the scoop on how much of a boss Michelle Kang, the Washington Spirit owner, really is. Since retiring, doing this job has actually helped me keep in touch with my old teammates and friends. And I'm so, so grateful for that. Speaking of my teammates and friends, Becky Sauerbrunn and I put out an episode of Good Vibes FC talking all about the NWSL and the WSL games over this past weekend. I do have to make a correction to my own mistake. I wrongly stated in the episode that the rain were 0 and 2. The rain are 1 and 1. That is my bad. They won their first game. They lost their second game. We're just going to have to blame that one on the jet lag. I'm very sorry to the rain and to their fans. In the time since we recorded Good Vibes, the U.S. Women's National Team roster for She Believes dropped. I am so excited to see Kat Macario and Mal Swanson back on the roster after they were both out with injuries. A few other notable additions are Lily Johannes, who plays for Ajax in the Netherlands. Yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) We can see you in the mirror, so I just have to turn. (laughs) Oh, sorry. Oh my God, no, it's fine. (laughs) That was so funny. Why? My producer just had to come in and be like, Sam. (laughs) I see Sam. I know, it's like a blooper. (laughs) A few other notable additions are Lily Johannes, who plays for Ajax in the Netherlands, and Eva Gaitino, who plays for PSG. Lily Johannes is just 16 years old. She's from Springfield, Virginia, in the US, but she moved to the Netherlands when she was 10. And it's been rumored that she's been recruited to play for the Netherlands as well, although she spent time with both the US and Netherlands youth program. So it's really exciting to see her get her first senior team call up. This young European contingent that also includes Corbin Albert of PSG is really interesting to me to see them being called in with the national team. And it might signal even more influence from Emma Hayes, which Trinity is going to refer to in this upcoming interview. Emma will have had exposure to these players in her time coaching at Chelsea. So I'll be watching really closely during She Believes to see how Lily and Eva are introduced to the U.S. team during the tournament. She Believes starts on Saturday, April 6th with the U.S. Women's National team playing Japan and Canada playing Brazil. The winners of each game will face each other the following Tuesday and the losers play in a third place game. I'm continuing my tour of England for the rest of this week, spending some time with my sister in London and eating as many Yorkshire puddings as I can get my hands on. We have some more games on our itinerary, so make sure you're following along TWG on socials, and I will try to share as much as I can. I got so many recommendations from you all on places that I can get a good roast dinner and a pint in London. Thank you for sending those in. Some recommendations included Quality Chop House, thanks Bruce, and the Cadigan Arms, thanks Ashley. Jake Detloff from Holyoke, Massachusetts, suggested that I go get a roast pork roll from a vendor in Borough Market that I am actively on the hunt for. I'm really excited to spend some time here in London and continue what has basically become my own personal food tour. I love getting these emails and recommendations from you all. So please keep those coming. You can email us here anytime at women's game, M I B at men That's women's game, M I B at men Okay, finally, I am done. That's all for me. Thank you all so much for being here. And here is the highly anticipated interview with Trinity Rodman. Trinity Rodman has quickly become one of the most recognizable names and faces in the women's game. Trinity is a forward for the U.S. Women's National Team. She's accumulated 34 caps since her first in 2022. It seems like you have 10 years of experience already, Trin, and it's only been two years with the national team. She made her first international tournament roster last summer at the 2023 World Cup and just recently won the W Gold Cup with the U.S. Trinity plays her club football for the Washington Spirit. In her first season after being drafted as an 18-year-old, she was named Rookie of the Year, named to the NWSL Best 11, and named U.S. Soccer's Young Female Player of the Year. She helped lead the Spirit to a championship in 2021. 
Trinity's known for her personality off the field just as much as her talent on the field. She shares TikToks, talks about how much she loves Fortnite, and is really open with her fans. Her popularity has played an important role in the growth of the NWSL recently. Players like her are part of the appeal of the league for fans and sponsors alike. I'm almost done here. Trinity <laughs> is one of the great. most fun. <laughs> She's one of the most fun to watch players in the world right now. It's so exciting to watch her play. She's always either about to score a goal, about to meg someone, about to throw some hands, or about to sprint back and make a great defensive play. Really, anything could happen. It makes her so dynamic, and I'm so excited, as you can tell, to have her here on Friendlies to just talk through the last few years of her life and career. Trinity, finally, welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> that was amazing. I'm so happy to be here. Oh my gosh, we are so excited to have you. I wanted to start, I heard you tell a story about how you were so competitive as a kid, and I wanted to ask you about that. When did you realize that soccer was that outlet for you to be competitive, and what are like your first memories of playing? Um, yeah, this question's like so funny, because my answer is like when I first started playing soccer, which people don't believe, but me and my mom talk about it all the time, just... I never understood the concept of like, oh, we're playing just for fun. Like we're playing just to like laugh and smile, giggle, have a good time. No, I was not laughing. I wasn't smiling. <laughs> like I wanted to win. I wanted to score goals. I wanted to dribble everyone. I wanted to win. And I think that started really young, but like I only had that for soccer. And that's the thing. It like wasn't something that I had to like get like I was just there with soccer other sports I kind of was okay this isn't it like I, I know that but with soccer it's like always been there and I think it's still there like obviously you can have fun sometimes but it's like come on we, we want to win you know I know I like actually totally believe you and I so relate my dad was my coach when I was like literally only like five and six years old and he would have to like put goal restrictions on me in these little like <laughs> six-year-old soccer games because I would just like, I mean, I would just score a lot and I would want to be able to score as much as possible. So when he would tell me to like calm down, I'd cry and I would be like miserable that I couldn't just go on a rampage and score as many goals. When you were young in that age and probably doing exactly the same thing, could you just tell that you were like more athletic than everybody else? <laughs> um, yeah, I, like, I don't want to sound like cocky and saying that, but like, it was just different. Like, I was just, I wasn't trying to, like, oh, give it to Susie Ann to score a goal. No, I didn't. Like, no. I'm not, like, I don't want to pass it to them for them to have a good time. <laughs> it was more like, give me the ball. Um, yeah, as the years have gone on, I've become a little bit more selfless. So that's good. That's a great <laughs> characteristic to adopt or acquire. So, yeah, I think. I, yeah, I think I had that level pretty, yeah. pretty young. I'm sure it was pretty obvious. I also wanted to ask about your brother, DJ, who I know just had his senior night at USC for basketball. I know you couldn't make it because of your national team commitments, but could you just tell us a little bit about your relationship with your brother and how close you guys are? Yeah, I, yeah, we're best friends. And obviously, you know, having a sibling so close and being best friends, but um, it's just been amazing. And being a year apart and growing up in sports, I think the sport part helps a lot with the competitive aspect and just like naturally competing with each other and having that connection. But I think as we've gotten older, our relationship has grown to be so a lot more sentimental. Cause I think growing up, me and my brother like would never hug. We'd never say anything nice to each other. Like we weren't that type of like, sibling relationship and now it's more of like oh we'll actually hug each other when we see each other we'll say really nice things about each other we'll encourage each other so i think he's honestly become my role model and i wouldn't have said that a couple years ago just because i feel like we had that just like best friend energy and i never thought of him in that way and i feel like now seeing him really develop is like a great brother a great son a great teammate a great person i'm like whoa like he's actually changed my life so much and I'm now realizing as we're both growing up is like you like never take it for granted having someone so close it's so amazing and he's he's just funny and I love him being able to come to my games and I, me being yeah. able to see his games and just the opposite sides of the spectrum that we're on is like he's 
so calm. Couldn't care at all. We'll have a beer in the stands, just chilling, whatever. Roast me after the game for missing an open goal. I'm on the other <laughs> side of like, I'm freaking out. I'm looking at the refs. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, don't fall. Don't get hit. Don't miss this shot. Ah, ah, ah. Like, just intense. It's just like the opposite, but it works. It balances itself out and it's been great. Oh, that's amazing. I know. I think that Christy and I weren't very close when we were younger either. Like we just get closer with every passing year. And I think that having sports as kind of the thing that ties us together, like you realize the older you get that they understand your life better than anybody else. So of course you're going to call them first when things happen. Um, I love hearing that. That's so cool. You guys are so close. Uh, Trinity, you have the ability to just pull off these incredible moments on the field. Your game is such a unique blend of athleticism, skill, and bravery. When you pull off something really sick, something that's like definitely going to be in the highlights, do you feel like you're just totally in the zone? Like it's your body doing what it knows how to do subconsciously, or are you kind of thinking through every step? No, I don't think I'm thinking at all. I think that's like why it works so much because it is so natural and it just like, I don't know, I just am like, how am I going to get out of this one? And it's not most people's first, <laughs> first like option. But for some reason, my brain goes to like, oh, let's do a 360 twirl through the legs. Like, it's just like, oh, yeah. that's the easiest way to get same. out of that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <same>. <laughs> um, no, I think, yeah, I don't think there's a lot of thought. I think I'm, I definitely hide my expression when it, when I pull it off and I'm like, whoa, I didn't think that one was going to go through the legs, but here we go. Well, what about when you watch them back? Like if you see a highlight of yourself, are you ever like, damn, that was like actually so sick. Oh yeah. Like I'll watch it with my <laughs> mom and be like, mom, <laughs> look. Um, but I think, no, I'm getting like roasted now because now I have like my signature, like pull back Meg things like, oh, that's all she can do. I'm like, but it works. Yeah, so I, don't I hear. wish that's all I could do. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Okay, Trinity, I want to start with your career just in 2021, the year you got drafted into the NBSL. You were the second overall draft pick selected by the Washington Spirit. When did you really first feel like a professional? Was it when you got drafted like that night or was it a little bit later when you arrived in DC or when you played in your first game? No, I would say I, it really sunk in for me. I feel like I've always been really independent. So like moving and stuff, I don't feel like was that difficult to just like do that on my own. But like, I would say just the intensity at practice and how on everyone was all the time was a shock for me. I think my rookie year, the beginning of it, I was kind of just that rookie that like sat back and didn't really say much unless I was spoken to, like just kind of watched and observed everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Kelly and Sonnet were on the team at the time and like, just, um, you get rocked by them a couple times and you're like, yeah, wasn't expecting that one. And you're like, okay, here we go. Like that's, I think, yeah, just the intensity uh, of the physical side of like, no, you're not going to go by me just cause it's practice. And like the mental side too, of just like taking no prisoners, like, come on, like, let's go. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely say just, like, in trainings, how consistent performance and just being locked in was. Yeah, and you you mentioned Kelly O'Hara and Emily Sonnet, your Washington Spirit teammates in 2021, and defenders for the national team who definitely are not letting anybody go by them ever. Um, but you scored five minutes into your professional debut in a Challenge Cup match against the North Carolina Courage. The goal itself was a long ball from the back. You took a touch, kind of steadied yourself and slaughtered it so confidently past the keeper. As a rookie, you just looked so calm and like not phased at all by the occasion. But were you actually calm? How did you actually feel in that moment? It's so funny. I still think about it to this day of like, I don't remember any single part of that entire game. I don't remember what minute I got subbed in on. Like I couldn't have told you anything that happened. Even like the play-by-play -play people like tell me to walk them through and I'm like I like couldn't tell you I watched it back so that's how I know but in the moment I was like just bring it down and just shoot it somehow and it looked very calm but I think in my head I was just like trying to catch up with everything that was happening so I didn't even have time to 
overthink the shot or overthink anything that happened in that play. So, yeah. How did you feel when it went in? Oh, it was the greatest feeling. I mean, we were still losing, but like, (laughs) it it was still great. I mean, yeah, that was the best thing ever. My celebration was the cringiest thing I've ever done. Um, don't want to think about that. What did that you do? Later. Wait, I don't remember what you did. I, like, was. literally ran back and I was like... It was, ah! so bad. it was so bad. I've, like, fixed it a little bit, but, like, some celebrations, I'm like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. But, so, speaking of celebrating, you guys went on to have such a great year. You won the championship and you played a huge role in that game, assisting what would go on to be the game-winning goal by Kelly O'Hara. Was it surreal to win the championship as a rookie? Or were you just kind of like, yeah, like being a pro is pretty sick. We won. Um, no, I, yeah, I think that year was probably the craziest year I've ever had. Like the best year, but also just the craziest with everything that was happening, like with our team, with staff, with everything. Um, but yeah, never in my life. Could I have told you my rookie year I would assist a goal to Kelly O'Hara, the woman I've looked up to for the longest time, to win? Like, it's just the craziest thing. Like, you couldn't have wrote that down. You could not on my bingo card, you know? So I think that was just crazy. And after that, I think it was just like, ugh. Like, it was, we did it. Because we had gone through so much as a team and we, like, came together so well of, we can do this like we've got this we just need to play how we've been playing and just get the job done and that's what we did and it was the most amazing feeling i still replay in my mind often ah i know winning the nwsl really is so so special i replay when i've done it too it's incredible so that was 2021 2022 was a tough year for the spirit you guys came in 11th in the nwsl but you were able to find your own success with the national team you got your first call in to she believes in february of 2022 What did that feel like to get called in for the very first time? And who did you call to tell them the news first? Um, oh my gosh, I don't even, it was crazy. I mean, I never, that's the thing with me. Like I'm never thinking, it's the weirdest thing. I'm never thinking ahead of like, what's going to happen. I obviously have those goals for myself, but I'm never thinking like, oh, I could get called up. Like that was never even on my mind. Like even when I went in that game, like, the first goal I ever got in the NWSL, like, I never thought I'd touch the field that whole year. Like, I was like, I'm just a practice player. Like, I'm here to practice. So I think for me, it's just, like, everything's been a shock of, whoa, that's happening. So it was the most amazing thing. I was so shocked in a way. And then I group FaceTime with my sister, my mom, my brother, and I was like, guys, guess what? (laughs) Um... But no, it was the most amazing thing ever. But I think, too, the hardest thing about that was how, I don't want to say how horribly Spirit was doing at the time. And, like, that year. And then trying to perform at, like, the highest level with the national team was, like, the weirdest balance ever. Like, it's so nice when you're doing well at NWSL and then you go into camp and you're like, okay, I'm ready, I have the confidence. But then when you're doing poor, it's like, how do I channel that inner confidence again? You know? Yeah, totally. Well, I think like speaking of that, at that at this time in 2022, the US Women's National Team roster was like going through kind of a period of transition and you were kind of asked right away to step in and play a big role for the national team. I think like years ago, it would take players a long time to get caps and to earn like minutes on the team, but your generation, I think, maybe because partly because you guys are so good and because you're being put into professional environments sooner, you're being expected to deliver right away, right when you get called in. So we, you, you've only been on the national team for two years and we expect so much from you already. When I was on the national team for two years, I was like still so clueless. So how have you handled being asked to do so much for the national team in such a short amount of time? Yeah, <laughs> I've handled it. Like I'm still... I feel like it's going to be, like, a process for the longest time. Obviously, you know the ups and downs of being in camp and then having to go back and perform. But I don't know. For for me, it is an adjustment. And, two, it's not just, like, two different teams. You're also asked to play two different roles. And that's also the tough part. Mm. It's, like, you then you gain confidence with club of just, like, the comfortability of being with them all the time, playing your specific way with your skill set, and then – 
you're going into camp and you're being asked to do something different. There's different game plans. There's different tactics. There's different positionings that they want you to be in. And I think for me, you're almost like relearning every single time you go in. And like, I love the fact that I feel like I'm still learning every single day on the field. But at the same time, it's like, I still feel like I'm retaining information while trying to play at the highest level. So I think that's the hardest thing for me is like, I almost feel like I'm trying to catch up with what's happening still. Um, so that's been tough. But again, I think with the interchange of the team and the younger players, the veterans, the, everything in between has helped the team really mesh because everyone's kind of going through different things. So almost like relating on the stressful moments and like being able to connect that way is the most bizarre way to put it, but it's been helpful to have that support. And yeah, I think too, another thing that I never really bring up, just looking up to all these players and now going through it and talking to them as friends is the most bizarre thing ever, but the most amazing thing. Cause it's like, when you're out of the environment and even like fans in general, like you look in the environment and you're like, oh, it's easy. Like they're there for a week. They have to play one game and they're gonna just do their job. And then you're in the environment and you're like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> it's Isn't not it wild? easy. <laughs> yeah, it's the craziest thing ever. But yeah, seeing behind the scenes of everything, being a part of it and pushing each other so hard is amazing, but also tolling in a way that I'm still trying to, figure out how I to navigate. I know. I hear you. I think one time Tobin Heath told me that like kind of an initiation onto the national team is if you've sat down in your shower and cried. And I was like, oh, I'm on the national team. Then I do that all the time. <laughs> and I think it just speaks to like, it's not that it's miserable. It's just that there, it's such an elite training environment and you want to be there so bad and you want to perform so bad that sometimes you, when you don't live up to your own expectations, it, it's just really stressful and emotional. Um, just, does that make sense to you? Like, do you agree? No, 100%. <laughs> and I think too, with so, having so many camps, it's like, you feel like you're almost like, I just left camp and I'm going back again. Like, it's like you leave camp and you're already getting the email that you're invited to the next one. It's like, ah, but I think, yeah, it's, it's crazy it's just crazy yeah just i know i know for sure well something else that's crazy is that this u.s team is still in a moment of transition um coaching transition currently playing under interim head coach twyla kilgore while awaiting emma hayes to take over the team and meanwhile the competition amongst the forwards is like what everybody's talking about i feel like there's potential returns from mouse Swanson and kat macario there's you, there's Lynn Williams, Sophia Smith, Alex Morden, Jaden Shaw, Midge Purse. The competition right now is so intense. The Olympics is coming up. It's a small roster of 18 compared to the World Cup, which is 23. So Trinity, what are you doing during this coaching transition to set yourself apart as a forward on the national team? Oh, <laughs> loaded question. Um, I know, it was a lot yeah, to that one. Yeah, it's so, it's so hard. Like, you support your team so much, but at the end of the day, at the same time, you do have to think like, I want this spot. Like as much as you support the people next to you and like wanna be that support system, you're like, I need to support myself and set myself up for success, which is the craziest balance. And it's, that's just a whole different thing. But I think for me, the biggest thing that's helped me a lot is I do perform better when I'm not overthinking my skills. and thinking that I need to transform into a player that I think Twyla expects or Emma expects me to be. I feel like before when I would first got on the team, there was a lot of comments and even myself knowing like, oh, Trinity for Washington Spirit is not the Trinity we're seeing with the national team. And I'm like, yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> so I think just being myself and trusting my creativity, because that's something I pride myself on is being the out of the box player and trying new things because when they do when you do pull them off it is something amazing and it creates a lot of predictable moments and so many opportunities and just entertainment in general i think is huge that it doesn't get talked about enough of like soccer soccer but also like 
we're here to entertain and we're here to have fun and we're here to enjoy ourselves, which I think is really important. But again, I'm like just rambling, but just, no, I find that so interesting. Yeah. Just the ability to like be yourself and never feel like you have to change just because you think this coach wants this specific player. Like you're in there for yeah. a reason. You just need to like keep that in the back of your mind at all times. Yeah, totally. I think that's great that you, that you have that and you know that about yourself. What is it like during this interim period? Like, how does it feel knowing that Twyla's with you in camp, but Emma is watching from somewhere, but it's not like you can just go up to Emma and clarify <laughs> anything. Like, what, yeah. how does that feel as a player? Um, I, I would say it's just, I don't want to say uncomfortable, but it is just like weird because it, there is very, very limited communication and it's the communication from Twyla to us. So it's like, so it's like you're being scouted all the time. Almost like, it's almost like a scout at this point in time. Um, so yeah, it is. It's like Twyla obviously is her own coach and she's been brought in to be the interim and she has her own points being the actual coach in the camp but at the end of the day it's like does Emma want all the same things that Twyla is wanting in this moment in time or is are things going to change as soon as she comes in and she's going to want a completely different thing which I doubt it's going to be like that but at the same time that is in the back of my head of like you never know if there is a disconnect of like there's one specific thing that she might tweak or like one specific formation that she might want based off personnel. So I think that's also a very interesting thing. Yeah, it sounds difficult in a lot of ways. And I think when I think about this situation that you're in, where you're about to be coached by two of the best coaches in the women's game and Emma Hayes and Jonathan Geraldes, who's come in to coach you at the spirit. I'm curious if it feels similar with the spirit. Now we're going to go back to your club team. Like you guys are also going through a coaching transition there. You're awaiting your new head coach to come and join you. How do you, how is the spirit handling this kind of interim period while you await your head coach? And does it feel similar to how it feels with the national team right now? Um, I think it's a little bit different just because I feel like obviously with national team, there's just a lot more, I'm going to say outside noise, but just a lot more is talked about in the sense of like Emma coming, but here it's not as talked about. Like it's more like Adrian's here and here's, here's our coach and this is our game plan. So I feel like here it's, it feels more like this is our head coach right now. And with national team, it's like, it's constantly like, Oh, Emma's coming soon. Emma's coming soon. So it's like you're the anticipation of that. But here, I think we do, have a very new team and that's kind of been our focus of just the team obviously he has his plans and everything but right now we do need to grow as a team with the new players with the older players and just getting that mesh and figuring out what works because we obviously have the whole we didn't start off very well it couldn't have gone worse honestly but um we're going into the home opener we're playing a new team so it's like you're you're a new team going off of a, a loss and then also playing a team that you have basically no scouting report on. So it's like so interesting. So yeah, I'd say it's definitely different. And we're kind of just focused on the players right now more so for, for sure. Yeah. I want to stick with the spirit. Um, your team, your club owner, Michelle Kang has played such a huge role in the professionalization of the league the last couple of years. And I'm so curious what she's like, she always looks like such a boss with her sunglasses on. How much do you guys interact with her day to day and what's she like to be around? Yeah, I mean, she what she <laughs> what she looks like to everyone else is like kind of how she is. Um, just a queen, just bougie in the best way possible. Um, and she just she's great. She try like she makes every single game that she can. She pops her head in here and there just to say hi to see how we're doing, which is amazing to be able to have that connection is so amazing. And also her being a woman is also great. Um, but yeah, I think she players first. Like it's great. She's always thinking about what's gonna improve this club, um, and not only this club. Obviously, expanding to internationally and like everything like that. So I think just growing the women's game in general, but also like 
her having the ability to connect with each individual team that she plans on working with and connecting with is a skill. I don't know how that woman has enough time or enough, like, I swear she has like duplicates everywhere, to, like via every single place at one time. But no, the relationship I've been, built with Michelle has been really good. And she just keeps in, improving this club and making it so great and a great role model to look up to for all of us, even just in our future endeavors after soccer, I think is so cool. Yeah, that's amazing. I feel like she's done such an incredible job. She just seems like such a baller. Like, I actually heard this story about her one time. I don't know. This is like a pure rumor, but you basically, you guys were deciding like the schedule about if your game was going to be at Audi Field or at another stadium. And somebody was explaining to her like, well, we don't own Audi, so we can't just like dictate where this, what time this game is going to be at. And she, I heard that she was just like, well, why don't we just buy Audi? And I was like, oh my God, this lady is such a baller. Like, does that sound like something she would say? No, 100% it sounds like something she would say. Like, 100% that's something she would do. Like, she, like, can figure out anything at any yeah. time. And it's just, like, something so easy. She talks about changing the world. Like, it's something that happens overnight or in a couple hours. It's She's just crazy. out here doing it. Yeah, it's great. But, yeah, that's definitely something that she would say. She said something similar to that for sure. Oh, my gosh. Well, again, pure rumor like nobody come for me about that i thought it was hilarious and very cool of her okay Trent, i have just a couple more really quick questions for you we wanted to give our listeners a chance to ask you some questions so we asked them to send some in on social media nubia wants to know what's your current favorite tiktok trend <laughs> it always goes to tiktok first i've I done know. this for myself um <laughs> tiktok trend um any dances that I can get people to be in. But recently I've kind of been on like the comedy TikTok. I mean, I don't know if you saw my comedy donut talk. TikTok with them at camp. I that did. Was I t How did you get sorta and Rose to say yes to that? I was like shocked. I'm so persuasive. I'm telling you, this is my superpower. But it oh was great. God. And I was so happy that they wanted to be in it and be like actresses. They did a great job. I know they did such a great job. Okay. Jen Yenter wants to know who's the best 1v1 defender in the NWSL. Whoa. Oh, gosh. Um, honestly, right now I would say it changes all the time. But right now I would probably say Casey Krueger. Love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Like okay, cool. Um, yeah, I know. I'm glad you said your own teammate because you're up against her every week now. Um, okay, last fan question, Trinity. What's your go-to bubblegum flavor? How are you chewing gum during games? By the way, I do not get it, but what, what flavor is it? Um, I know, everybody always wonders how I, like, don't choke, but I just, yeah, I'm just another secret talent. But, yeah, I, I got to tell this story because I think it's so funny. But I obviously have gum in my mouth all the time, but Ashley Sanchez was like, oh, I'm going to try to chew gum for the game. Like, I'm going to see what the hype's about. So I was like, yeah, yeah, do it. She does. <laughs> she, she was like running mid game and she's chewing her gum. And like, apparently when she like inhaled to like get a breath, it like went down her throat and she was like choking on the field. And she told me afterwards, I didn't even know what happened, but I'm like, some people got it. Some people don't, but I just think it's so funny that people actually think it's like a talent, but I'll take it. Um, I know, but flavor? I would say, yeah, flavor. Let's get to the good stuff. Then. <laughs> um, any blue flavor, honestly. Spearmint is not my vibe, but anything blue, I'm good. All right. Blue gum fraternity. That question was from San Diego FC. Okay, Trin, I am so happy that we could have you on. It's been so much fun to get to know you better. I'm so thankful that we had this opportunity to talk. I do just want to say how much I've admired the way that you've handled being in the spotlight and also continued to be yourself and like bring your own flair to it. I love your TikToks. They are like so brave and fun in a way that like I and all millennials are too scared to be brave and fun. Like my biggest fear is that somebody will ask me to be in a TikTok and I'll look stupid, but you are so much fun to watch in the field. You have such incredible opportunities in front of you. Um, and I want to just leave everybody with one last question. When you look into the future, like let's fast forward 10 years, you'll still only be 31 years old, which is how old I am right now. So don't <laughs> say anything. What, what do you imagine for yourself in terms of what you'll have achieved? Like, 10 years from now, what do you think you'll have done? This is like such an interesting answer. Like I said before, I don't like to 
put like titles of things. I want to have this many championships and this and this. I just don't think it's realistic to do. But I would say, I know this is like even bigger pressure, but I just want to like say that I've changed the game in a way of like I talked like touched on before, just like the entertainment piece and just the the fun part of soccer. And I know it sounds so simple, but I think the higher the level gets and the younger players decide to like make that jump the more serious and the more cutthroat it is in terms of like how good you are and your skill set and just making rosters and I feel like we sometimes lose sight of the personality and the creativity that you can still bring with having that intensity and having the skill set to make it so I would honestly just say the impact that I have on little girls and even people that I play with to just like have the freedom to be yourself on the field and bring your your own personality to soccer. Ah, oh, amazing. Trinity, thank you so much for being on Friendlies from the women's game. Yay, I'm so happy. Thanks for having me. I know. Like that was awesome, Trin. You say such nice things about me. It's like amazing. Oh! <laughs> I Well, I'm a huge fan. I'm really, really excited for you. Um, and I'll be cheering. I loved talking with Trinity so much. I still can't get over how great and fun of a conversation that was. My big takeaways from Trinity, blue gum only, Michelle King rocks, and TikToks maybe aren't as scary as I thought they were. Thank you guys so much for listening and a huge thank you to Trinity Rodman for coming on the show. Please make sure that you are subscribed to this podcast feed. You can also follow along on our socials at Women's Game MIB on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And while you're at it, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I keep explaining to my mom that you can watch this podcast on YouTube and you can see our cute little faces while we talk. Hi, mom. You're doing a really great job. Keep it up. Next week, there is another episode of Good Vibes coming at you on Tuesday and then another incredible Friendlies guest coming to you on Thursday. Next week's guest is Denise O'Sullivan, North Carolina Courage and Ireland midfielder. I got to chat with Denise while I was in North Carolina at the Ring of Honor ceremony slash home opening game. And it was my first interview in person. It was so much fun to catch up with Denise. We talked about Ireland's first ever World Cup last summer. We also talked about what it means to her to captain the North Carolina Courage. Denise also humored me as I just relived all of my glory days at North Carolina. It was so much fun and I can't wait for you all to hear from her. So stay tuned. There is so much content in the works here at the women's game. I hope that you're all enjoying what we've been sharing. I will see you soon.